connectivity. Not that electronic connectivity that so many of us work with all too often. You know, getting connected and making sure that everything, but, yeah. but human connectivity. Yeah. It's important to feel connected you know, as a part of it. You know, it's uh, you know, what brings most of us back here every Sunday. There is enough of a connectiveness to something either some project or some people or something that's going on that gets you back to this place on Sunday morning and often for most of you other times during the week as you come back to Messiah. And there's other connectivities kind of things going on. There's, you know, sometimes there are the people that, that uh, uh, they might point them out and say, well, oh, he's connected. You know, meaning he's got some connection to somebody in power or with wealth and power or something like that. He may or may not exercise that connectivity, but it's, you know, there are people that want to get connected to him because he's connected to somebody else. So they, that's that invitation of connectivity. Connections. It's a... We all want that feeling of belonging to something, you know, being a part of something, you know, feeling connected. So we don't feel connected, it's very depressing. Very depressing, because, you know, and we, we get that way, even when we're basically connected. Sometimes we are disconnected for several reasons, you know. Like, I have to take a trip to California disconnected from the rest of the family or other things or or on active duty and we get stationed elsewhere and you spend months apart or years apart or just traveling or illness or you know, just live someplace else connectivity you know, it's important when when it's not there we feel it connectivity yeah. we get connected in many ways for for hmm, there's this God-given power of connectivity. It's kind of a chemistry thing. It's kind of a history. It's kind of a, uh, a developmental thing as to what's in, you know, what is the ideal fantasy partner in life for you. We kind of develop that, I don't know why, early in life. And in the teen years. You know, you begin to experience and say, wow, did you see that? Did you see him or see her? You know, wow. I remember the first time I laid eyes on to be my wife. I can tell you that story. It's still impressive. It's impressive. Yeah. And, but, but there's that connection. Unfortunately, what that connection is for too many people is the connectivity of selfishness, of lust, of that animalistic desire to possess, to conquer, to control. That's not a healthy connectivity. And so people who connect for the physical intimacy of things if they never get beyond that, their connectivity doesn't last all that long. We have a lot of examples of that. Maybe even some of you have experienced that concept. Because connectivity takes a lot more. It's unfortunate today, and I think it's, it's some more statistics were out this week, the past couple of weeks, about, uh, about the percentage of marriages in the, in the country and so forth relative to times past and so forth. And our country has, it's not, it's, it's not unusual. It's, uh, it's, it's a part of humanity. And humanity is delving at serving themselves. And so today people want to live together without benefit of clergy. They want to live, well, I used to call it living in sin. Yeah. 
But uh, everybody got by that now. You know, there's no cultural pressure for that anymore. So it's okay. You know, parents still wince at it, but they let it go. But what that living together without marriage does is it enforces that connectivity of the physical, which often gets in the way of that connectivity of the spirit, of the soul, and of your personalities. The physical is easy to connect with. That's why God designed it that way. That's easy. And it's exciting. But that's only a minor part of the full connectivity. Connectivity of husband and wife. Husband and husband, wife and wife. That doesn't connect the way God designed it at all. And it displeases him. But the connectivity of man and woman, not just physical, but also developing the spiritual connectivity has a tremendous effect on both the husband and the wife. Coming in this morning, I was listening to the, uh, at the close of the Lutheran Hour, they always have a question and answer process. And this morning, the question was presented, I don't remember precisely the question, but the situation was uh, a, a young person who was, uh, uh, was going with someone that they were contemplating getting married to. The problem was is that this other person was not a member of their faith. It was a different faith group. And they said, is that a problem? And the answer was, you know, first his expression was, I don't think you're going to hear the answer that I'm going to give you. Because the answer is, yes, it's a problem. The most intimate connection that most people experience in life is husband and wife. That's the way God designed it. They are help meets for each other in life. And when they are connected, not just physically, but spiritually, and, and in, in personality, in, in objectives, in goals, in, in how to lead life and how to relate to other people, and they are connected into a unit that does it as a unit. It's very effective. But in order to do that as a connected couple, you have to rely on something outside of yourselves as a couple. And the greatest outside help for that is connectivity with Jesus. Then you can, when the connections between husband and wife began to disassociate, and that will always happen. But when you begin to disconnect, if you're not both in Christ Jesus, then what do you have to rely on but yourself? And when things start going negative, and all that you have is to draw on your own resources to meet that disconnection, you're most likely to do what is best for you. And that seldom is connectivity when you're angry and upset with that person that you have been living with. It's not easy. That disconnection but it happens. And if you are both in Christ, then you understand the process of having been forgiven by Christ and gives you the incentive to forgive each other as you have been forgiven. And so it gives you, as God has connected you to himself, you can by, by him, by his strength, by his 
modeling <coughs> can connect again with one another. Because you're both working in the same faith, working together in the same Christ, a part of the same body of Christ, so that your bodies are not yours, but they are Christ's body, <coughs> belonging to him and a part of him as he is a part of you. That connectivity is important. And what Paul tells us in the epistle lesson for today is that baptism is how God connects us. We are connected to Jesus' baptism. Now when John was baptizing, you know, people were coming out to him. He was preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. They would come out and, and recognizing their sinfulness, they would ask to be baptized as a symbol of their being forgiven of their sins by God. And so when John looks up and he sees his cousin Jesus coming down, and Jesus says, baptize me. And John said, oh, wait a minute, cuz, just a second here. You know, this is a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. I should be asking you to baptize me, but not you by me. You're sinless. And Jesus says, not in today's gospel, but in the other gospel readings, he says, it's okay, John, this has a purpose. This is to fulfill what needs to be done, okay? Because he didn't tell John. He said, this is what connects me to baptism. So that the baptisms that come after you've gone and after I've gone, then those baptisms in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit connect them to my baptism. Because my baptism is the first of taking on the sins of the whole world. And it shows how God washes away that sin. And as Jesus then was baptized by John, he comes out of the water. And John hears and sees this voice. We don't know whether it was a, this is my, or whether it was, this is my son. Didn't say that. It said, but it said what was important. This is his beloved son with whom he is pleased. Pleased that he has sent the Savior into the world. Pleased that all the promises to Adam and Eve Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, so right on down to the prophets. All of that is now being fulfilled. The Savior from sin has arrived. He has been baptized. He has joined himself to humanity in holy baptism by John in the Jordan. He is connected. He is God, but He has connected us to Him.